Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about amateur moves. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is the most amateur move to do in web development? Well, I would say picking the, the I get obviously the wrong solution to fix your problem. And I'll add one more. We're going to upgrade this thing to the also the most amateur move to make when you start working as a software developer. And that's going to be assuming that everybody who's working where you start working is an idiot and doesn't uh, hasn't watched the same tech talks that you have. That would be my top list. So what I mean by when I say very obviously picking the wrong solution for the problem that you are solving and that being an amateur move is something that I see very often. This is the scary part about uh, working in many cases with freelancers or agencies or consultancies and so forth where uh, like th this is the thing that everybody is very scared of uh, when they're buying software uh, skills or like they're buying IT products from different developers and this is why usually you want to find someone who is who you trust because it's the same it's sort of the same problem as hiring a contractor if you hire the wrong person you're going to end up with a, a house that falls apart or whatever right and exactly the same thing can happen with a software developer because if you grab the wrong person they might be the, an amateur who doesn't understand that certain systems or certain things that needs to be built needs to be built in accordance with certain practices or using a certain set of considerations and an example would be I've seen uh, like a big like a corporate a big big corporation paying a small agency for basically developing them a WordPress site, and anybody who like knows serious software development will say that that's going to be a really bad investment for that company because WordPress will not be able to su to support the level of customization that they are going to need. You would be able to take the f okay, if you're working in an MVP fashion, which is usually the case. Sure, you will be able to take the first step and just give them a UI and some basic uh, CMS capabilities. Which, if 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 that was the whole story, would be perfect. It would have been the perfect thing for a small company or some uh, a, or even a big corporation if the, if that is all they need. But this is an, a major major company where their needs is actually going to have to like their their they have internal needs and business needs that needs to be reflected in the code and WordPress was never for simply never developed to to support that level of customization now it's still very customizable and very useful but it's very clear that this is not the use case this is usually when you hire developers to build a custom platform for the company because the company needs to be able to develop uh, continuously develop that platform to reflect their business requirements and that is the most amateur move there is same thing like uh, having a, a w w was at one consult consultancy at one point where the uh, the developers had developed a mobile application in React Native and it was only after the product was sort of like they were going to finish it where they realized that this is not going to work because the performance was vast, it was vastly underperformant. And when I asked them about it and I went, why would you take that sort of risk with something that is going to have to leverage, uh, in this case it was three-dimensional rendering. Uh, why not just stick with the safe solution which would have been to build it in uh, uh, in the native platforms language which is guaranteed to give you the performance that you need why take this risk and they went well we thought that react native was kind of cool in my world that is that is an amateur it's an amateur uh, it's it's gross neg negligence or like uh, i i don't respect it at all you're basically fucking up. The, you you've basically fucked up the product for the customer on a, on a whim. That's what you did. And if 
you had any professional like uh, integrity you would not have done that and if for some reason you didn't have the skills to actually build this thing in the native solution which would have been the right choice for their for the customer so that the thing actually works you should have not taken on the customer and this is a scare this is for me the amateur move if we upgrade this and say all right what is the biggest amateur move you can amateur mo move you can make when you start working in another company or a, a new company where you come into a new group of developers it's going to be a very similar sort of thing where you start talking as if the people working there are idiots and i've seen this many many times i've been the Id idiot so many times now that i i start i can i, I can smell it happening before it happens i know just immediately if i deal with a new developer a new hire whether or not they're going to think i'm an idiot or not uh, because the first thing out of their mouth literally the first thing is a suggestion how to do things better and this is like their first day in in one case i actually have this one guy a while back we were he was he hadn't even started working yet and we were discussing different considerations we needed to make in order to improve our testing strategy. Now the discussion was about regression testing. And so the first thing he says is, have you considered using property-based testing? And so I just, I kind of, well, how is that going to help us here? And my first thought is, you have l not even seen the code yet. You have no context, you haven't even done a single day's of work, and the first thing that you ask is if we've done property-based testing. And if you've ever worked with testing strategies and like worked with like uh, all these different testing practices, you would know that property-based testing, although there is absolutely a use case for it, is not something that you just apply and then it magically works. And I can only assume that he just wanted to chime in and felt like he had been quiet for too long or wanted to impress us in some way but like nobody everybody just kind of looked at him and like uh, yeah we can look into that but that's not really part of the discussion like uh, what are you trying to say and he didn't really want to say anything he just wanted to say oh have you thought about property-based testing nothing else to add another same the same dude uh, just a few days later this is his first day says to me, uh, like we're discussing a a, uh, a few issues within the uh, within our front end uh, application, where I try to explain uh, a strategy around how we can improve the test coverage and deal with some of the regression problems that we've had with our uh, I think it was React components at the time. And first, first, like he just uh, interrupts immediately and says, "Oh, have you?" But you know, right, that you don't have to do all as much testing if you just have the right configurations on your TypeScript uh, in your TypeScript uh, compiler, or like if you have the right TypeScript configuration. And I go, "Well, no, yes, it's true because if you have the type system, that's going to remove an entire uh, category of issues. But we do have it. Have oh, have you been looking at this configuration? Is there something better we can do? Is the configuration not strict enough? Because as I recall, it should be fairly strict." And he replies, oh, no, no, I haven't, that's on my to-do list. I haven't looked into your TypeScript configuration yet. And I go, okay. And internally I'm thinking, so you just assume, like you, we are using TypeScript and without even looking into the thing, the first thing you say is, you know, we can solve a lot of problems with TypeScript if we just make it strict enough and you don't even know if we're already solving those problems. And I kind of go, well, why, wh 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 like, uh, why are you assuming that everybody, like that, like why are you even talking? We've had, had other developers who's been who had has come in. The first words out of their mouth is, "Why are we not using microservices?" This is day one, and I go, "Yeah, you're definitely the first person I've ever heard say that." Could we start by just learning how the system works, and then maybe you will start once you understand the company to get why we're not using microservices maybe that would be a good start so what I want you to take away from this is that the biggest amateur move that you can make as a web developer is to is to pick the wrong solution 
for the problem that you are solving. Very obviously the wrong problem. And the same sort of mindset that, that annoys me enormously when I'm dealing with a new hire or someone who comes in and just assumes that, well, obviously because we're not doing A, B and C or so forth, it just the reason has to be that everybody else is an idiot or that nobody else has a personal hobby of reading newsletters and tech and lo looking at tech talks and stuff like that that must be the uh, i need to tell all these people that what they're doing is absolutely wrong it's the same sort of thing if you don't understand the context that you are dealing with or you don't understand the problem that you uh, you're solving or uh, the considerations that you m need to make in order to make something sustainable and well working for the customer that you're dealing with that is the biggest amateur move that is the difference between an amateur and a professional because an amateur doesn't know any better and an amateur will give a try to ship a a WordPress site to a massive international company as a good sustainable solution or build a really shitty uh, mobile phone app in technology that wasn't really designed to deal with that sort of thing or suggest arbitrary ways of improving code without even looking at the code first. These are amateur moves. So if you want to be taken seriously as a professional, you need to take the time to actually understand what sort of considerations you need to make when you're dealing with a specific problem. As I like to say, be problem oriented. Understand what a good solution looks like for a given problem and don't just jump in and say, oh, I have all these to these sort of tools or these concepts that I sort of understand. Clearly, I know enough now to just do this because usually there's more to it than just using a very simple, uh, convenient tool. You have to think, a, a real professional usually has to think about things a lot more than just jumping to the first simple thing that is around the corner. Have a great day.